shit. Here we go again. I'm coming at you with a tiny light. That's so bright. Neil's gadgets got me feeling just right. A double A battery size is built to please, but it's kicking bigger lights to their knees. This tiny beast is powered by a laser, shining so bright it's a real crowd pleaser. You can spot a fly's asshole from hundreds of feet away and do it with style, make it night and a day. This sleek and sexy light is the perfect carry. Low priced and ready to carry. Neil's gadget's got the tiny light, shining bright in the dead of night. Don't let it size fool you, it'll kick your ass An LED designed to make your other small lights trash Lightweight and so easy to carry The tiny light will shine with all its might And impress so easy it's scary Yeah, yeah The perfect KD for a night on the town Shine bright when the sun goes down Neil's gadgets really hit the mark Take this out and light up the whole damn park Small in size but big in power This thing will grab the and devour. Neil's gas has got that tiny light shining bright in the dead of night. Don't let it size fool you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jim here once again, and I'm here to talk about a cool little flashlight. This little guy right here in the middle, this is the Neil's Gadgets N Light D L2, which is an LEP flashlight. So a laser excited phosphor flashlight. Now, I realize that a lot of people watching right now already know what an LEP does and what it's for, but in case you are not aware, an LEP is going to be far superior for long distance throwing than an LED, even those that are famous for being throwers. And here's a blast from the past that if you're a longtime flashlight collector, this was one of the lights to own several years ago. I'd say five, six, seven years ago. This is the uh, the Thrunite Catapult V6. This was one of the smallest dedicated throwers of the time and very impressive performance. I don't remember the exact stats on it, but future me, editor me, is going to put something up on the screen right now so that I can be reminded and you can be educated. Now, What's the biggest difference between this light and everything else sitting here on the table? Well, versus these two, which both throw very, very well, this is significantly smaller than those. And between those two, this is very close to being the same size, but this has far more significance in the throwing performance. Now, this is 4,000 lumens, this is 3,000 lumens, and this is only 300 lumens. Well, about that. The lumens don't matter because this is a dedicated thrower, and it is an LEP, so we want that concentrated, focused, powerful beam of light, not a lot of power lost in scattering light, all across the uh, whatever area that you're shining it on. So it's going to be about candela, not lumens. For candela, <laughs> we have 122,600. Oof. And that is good for 700 meters of throw, folks. Out of a double A sized flashlight. So yes, inside is a 14500 rechargeable lithium ion battery. And Neil's gadgets, because they have been in this business for so long, they know what they're doing. Uh, they give you a very powerful vape cell uh, battery with your purchase that allows you to actually use the full potential of this light. Now here's something just as funny, and you're expecting this because you saw the photography already. This massive near Coke can is 8,000 lumens. Let's put that in perspective. 8,000 lumens and is a pretty good thrower. But it's kind of meant to be a jack of all trades. You can see the way that the reflector has been made or the four reflectors within the one. 
It's meant to give you good distance, but not just distance, but give you a good spread of light as well. And it does. This is a fantastic light. But if you're really looking at punching through the night and getting out far, this is going to be your choice. And it doesn't heat up nearly as fast as these four massive LEDs do. And it's lighter weight, significantly easier to carry because it just drops into your pocket with zero effort. This would be the way to go. Now, if you're camping and you've got the truck near you and all that, and that could be sitting in, I don't know, the center console or in the bed of the truck or something, uh, that's great. But for you actually going out and doing stuff and needing a portable, lightweight, easy to carry, long distance throwing light, that's going to be your choice. This used to be our choice when faced with that. You know, we would throw this in our back pocket with the lanyard hanging out. We would reach in and grab it and... That's what we considered to be a compact thrower at the time. Now, there are several options to choose from in this particular light. There's the standard black aluminum like you see here in mine, but there's also the white MAO finish, M-A-O, just like my MSR D4 V2 here. And of the two, go go with the white. The, the mouth finish is the coolest, and it's got a cool story behind it as well. I like the white always. Whenever there's a choice between anything and the mouth white, I go with the mouth white always now. There's also going to be titanium, full titanium, and full copper versions available as of right now as well. So you've got all your fetishes covered, whether you like titanium or copper or whatever it is that you're into, you're covered. One thing that I particularly love about this light that you're not going to see very well in photographs is you see the crosshatch pattern that's been done here, the knurling on the head. There's also micro milling done in there that feels really, really good. And you've got not just a bit of tactility, but it's a little bit of anti-slip as well. I really, really dig that. That might be my favorite part of the outside of this light. Oops. You have the double bent pocket clip, so it works well for clipping in your pocket or the bill of your baseball cap is the most popular where you can just clip it on there and it's facing forward so that you can see what you're doing hands-free. That's a very, very popular way to carry a light these days. All right, so operation. Click on, click off. You have a standard clicky or forward clicky as they're now called. They used to just be clickies and then somebody decided to do a reverse clicky. Now they have, you have to specify forward clicky or reverse clicky. So your low is a hundred, oops, sorry about that, is a hundred lumens and your high is 300 lumens. So yes, half presses are a thing, so you can have momentary light because it is a standard forward clicky. It is IPX8 rated and one meter drop tested, so they're going to be super tough. They're inexpensive, in my opinion, at 135 But here's the deal. If you use the link and the discount code down in the video description below, it'll take you over to Neil's Gadgets and you'll get a discount. And whether you choose to buy this light or this light, or I don't think they have the catapults anymore, but um, Neil's Gadgets has, if there's a light you want, I can almost guarantee Neil's Gadgets has it. I'm a huge fan. So that's why I participate with the affiliate link because I bought from them since about 2019. I love the quality of products that I get and I love the prices. Now it's got a sleek and sexy body design to it. So it feels nice in the hand. Again, I like that cross hatching there with the micro milling within it. It has a nice feel overall in the hand when you're carrying it and you're using it. 
And as I think I mentioned before, it's not going to heat up like a lot of the other lights on this table. And here's another one, this little guy right here, because it's, it's pushing out 4,000 lumens out of this little tiny light. This heats up fast to the point where they had to have the body within an aluminum heat shield because it would have just been too hot for most people to be able to carry. Now, I want to do two things very quickly here. I'm going to quit it with the jibber jabber. We're going to take a look at the beam pattern here in the studio, and then we're going to get our asses outside and see how it performs throwing some light. Okay, let's get an idea of the beam pattern of this light and how it's distinctly different than all of the others. I'll put these off to the sides over here. And we'll start rocking and rolling. Okay. So there it is on high. Now what you're going to see is obviously a very clearly defined hotspot. That is your direct LEP right there. And then you have a very soft corona around that. Now we would want to call that spill, right? So let's take a look at this. And this is the... Uh, so for an SC33, there it is on high. So yeah, you've got a hot spot here. Then you've got, it's got a, a quite a wide Corona and that's normally what we're looking at here. So there's your hot spot and the spill surrounding it. This has that extra little detail omitted. There's no real spill. It's just the hot spot and then the Corona. Now, the further distance you've got on this, that Corona does open up quite a bit to a little bit of spill, but I don't want to really call it spill because I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to think that you can walk around, I don't know, maybe go walking your dog with this and light up the path around you. That's not going to happen. Something like this, yes, it's got a nice wide spill, with a gentle cutoff, that is going to throw for a nice distance, be crazy bright, and give you spill as well. Whereas this, this is just meant to kick butt at a distance and give you a little bit of visibility around that main spotlight. Now we get to something like the Catapult V6. And there we see it's doing the exact same thing. Major focus is on the hot spot because this is all about candela. And then there's a little bit of spill. I've used this for trick or treating with my son and really great for it, man. I tell you, it's great for impressing all the other kids as you're walking around because they see how far away the light goes and you can shine it up into trees and houses and stuff that are far away. But when you're trying to walk around, what you can't see here until I turn off the light is there is some spill, but it's not as effective as you think it is. But at least it's there, okay? Whereas this one, and there's the glow gasket working, not so much. It's very, very, very faint. It's there, but it's faint. So how does it compare to the monster right here in my hand, the SP36 Pro? Well, let's see. Now again, we're being hit with 8,000 lumens, so it's ridiculously bright. So I'm gonna take it off a of turbo and we're gonna step it down to where it's somewhat close. And you see there is a distinct difference here, right? I mean, this is literally a laser beam of light. And this is a flood of light that gives you so much power that it does punch for quite a bit, but still. Now, this one is good for walking around and seeing at a distance because it gives you that good amount of light around you. Then you compare it size-wise to something like this. Now, my MSR is something I carry very, 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 very often. This is a fantastic light. And yes, very powerful. 
but it's mostly flood, right? Even at this close distance, there's still not really a lot of a hot spot. It's still very, very floody. Certainly a big difference from that. And then, of course, the ridiculousness of the emolent. I've got it set at 900 lumens right now. And that is all flood. There's almost no throw to this. And there's that beam pattern. And there's that beam pattern. I love the glow gasket in here. Nice, big, chunky glow gasket around the optic. Very nicely done. All the way around, this is a well-crafted light. Now let's get outside and see what it's really capable of. All right, decided to take this one out to a different location where I've got a lot more room to really demonstrate throw. And there was a tremendous amount of wind in this open area. So I'm just going to do a voiceover. Here we can see the maximum distance. You can see that it is just throwing the light out there. It's crazy how far this thing goes. Now, I don't know the exact range because I have no way to measure it. But it's further than I can see with even the headlights of my car as I drove out there. And... I had a few other lights with me that I was doing some other testing with and none of them could reach out this far. Now, what I didn't know at that time was that when I was going to sit down and do the tabletop review, that I was going to be comparing it to the catapult. So what I'm going to do is at the end of these segments, I'm going to go ahead and go out and do a separate segment, probably just in my neighborhood and shine the light down at the end of the longest street that we've got and do a comparison between this and the through night. But man, when it comes to these LEPs, it's almost effortless how far they can punch out. Now I'm trying to give you a real world idea of what this is actually like to use. And as I mentioned, it's not really good for lighting up the area around you but it's going to throw that light so far out. It's going to be impressive on that level, but as far as walking around on a dark path, it's not going to do you a lot of good. This is a very specific use kind of light. I've got to be honest with you, when you've got this thing in your hand outside at night, you can't help but have fun with it. Now, the problem is my eyes can't see as far as that light is able to go. So, yeah, I could probably identify a bear-sized object or a human-sized object and understand what it is. But as far as making a proper identification of something or reading signage or anything like that, no, probably not. So do you really need something this powerful? I don't know, but sometimes you like to have a gadget that's very high powered that you can enjoy what that gives you, even if it's not completely practical. Anyway, let's go ahead and cut to the new footage where I can do a realistic comparison against the catapult and let's see how it fares because they're very, very close in their specs on paper. So, as promised, I'm going to pit Neil's Gadget's light up against the LD70 here and give you a better idea of the real difference between an LED with lots of flood and an LEP that's all about throw. So we'll kick this on. I'm going to kick it down. 20 lumen low. That's not going to do much to show us anything. 200 lumens, 900 lumens, 2,000 lumens. 
Now I'm going to kick it up on turbo to the full 4,000 lumens. And what do you notice? No hot spot. Just a big wall of light that lights up everything in this immediate area. And there's a good amount of light heading down there. But watch this. That's a significant difference. So now I think we should probably take it just a little ways down the road and really stretch your legs. Now as luck would have it, it's going to start raining on us. So I promised I would bring out that big boy. Let's see how far that blasts out on turbo. Now again, remember that's 8,000 lumens. Now I'll bring out the little baby and I am shining onto the house all the way at the very end of the street, which is absolutely ridiculous. That street sign there is a full block away. And yep, it's just, it's like a laser beam out into the night sky. I also promised I would bring out the through night. So here is the catapult on turbo doing just about the same thing. So you have this size of light, which I need to properly demonstrate to you. That size of light versus that size light. And honestly, that is completely ridiculous. As great of a performer as that through night has always been, this is just a little bit better. It edges it out in a 14500 size. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, I wanted to tack on this extra little bit here at the end because I think it was important for you to really see a good amount of distance to really understand what this light is capable of and the power that you're actually holding in your hand for such a small body. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys for joining me as always, and I'll see you on the next video.